Whether you are new to gel nails, maybe you're just getting started, maybe you're thinking about getting started in doing gel nails, maybe you've just graduated and you are ready to start your new career and you're wondering what are all the things that you need to get started in builder gels? My name is Katie, I am a nail tech. I have been a nail tech now for like 11 years, it's crazy. And I specialize in gel nails and I get this question a lot about what do you need to start out with? What are like the basic essentials that you need? So this list specifically is gonna be talking about products and supplies that you need to use builder gels for natural nails. So we're not talking about long sculpting nails, extensions. We're, we're talking about structured manicures, gel overlays over natural nails. It is my favorite service to do, I love it. So what do you need to get started? What are the basic supplies, like the must haves that you have to have? So number one, you're definitely gonna need a gel lamp. And this is probably gonna be your most expensive investment for doing builder gels. And you are gonna want a good quality lamp. Let me stress that because if you don't have a good quality, quality lamp, your gels may under cure and you're gonna have all sorts of problems, lifting, wrinkling, maybe your gels aren't even curing at all, which is a big sign that the lamp is not the correct lamp for the gel that you're using. So what I highly suggest is getting the lamp that is made to use with your gel that you're using. So a lot of brands that make their gels, they also have lamps that they have tested with their gels to make sure everything's fully cured. That's the lamp that I would suggest that you go with. I have been using Accents, the brand Accents, for a long time, so I have two of the Accents lamps on my desk, and these lamps are super strong. I've never had an issue with product under curing or not curing at all. These lamps are really nice and strong. They're really great. And so you're gonna want a high quality lamp. Again, it may set you back two to $300 for one lamp, but it's definitely worth it. You don't wanna risk under curing. That could potentially lead to allergies, your nails not lasting, all sorts of problems. So make sure you get a good quality lamp. Next, you're gonna need some gel brushes. Now, if you are using a gel that comes in a bottle form, you may not need an actual gel brush. This is like a round standard gel brush that you would use to apply gel that comes in a pot. If you have a builder gel that comes in a pot, you're gonna want your gel brush. So they have the rounded ones, the more squared versions. I personally like the rounded brushes. I feel like they fit the cuticle area really well and it makes it a little bit easier to go around the cuticle area. So you got your round brush, this or your flat brush, whatever you prefer. And then I also think that you need a detailer brush, which is like a nice, really tiny, really fine, thin brush. And this is what I use to help maneuver the gel around if I need to, to make sure it's nice and smooth. I also suggest getting brushes with caps because it will help keep them nice and safe and prevent the gel from curing in your brush and then potentially ruining it. Then of course you're gonna need your nail file and a buffer. So these ones are both from Luxa. They make really nice quality nail files. You can also get some on Amazon or more inexpensive places like that. I just like really good quality ones because they don't lose their grit, so they're not gonna wear down really fast and then become dull and like useless pretty much. And they are really nice and sturdy, so they're gonna give you um, a little bit more control over your shape. You can get a really nice good shape because it's not gonna bend and flex as you're using it. And I actually use the Luxa buffers. These are the 100-180 buffers, and I actually just cut them in half so that I can use um, just a half for the client because that's really all I need. Then you're gonna need some dust brushes. This one is from Light Elegance. It's a really nice fluffy brush that I like, but it's also disinfectable, which is really good. I also have these little ones from Amazon. These ones I put around my pinky so that I can dust as I go when I'm doing cuticle work and things like that. So I got a nice big one and then I also got these little pinky brushes. Next, you're gonna want your cuticle pusher, of course. Now you can use an orange wood stick, something like that. I personally like these heavy duty cuticle pushers. These are disinfectable because they're 
metal and they just work really nice they last a long time and i personally like this style that has this flat edge because you can use it to gently remove the cuticle off the nail plate it makes it super easy so cuticle pusher and then we also have our cuticle nippers now you definitely want to be careful with these you want to make sure you know what you are cutting what you should not cut i would definitely use these with caution if you don't know quite what you're doing yet of course if there is like a hang nail or something you want to get these nippers out and just clip it off so it'd be out of the way and your client or yourself is not continuing to pick at it it's just going to really help just to have these handy now you're going to want some 99 percent isopropyl alcohol as well as acetone you're mostly going to use the alcohol for cleansing the nail cleansing the tacky layer all that stuff i use straight 99 percent isopropyl alcohol and then i also have 100 percent acetone in case i need it for art or if i for some reason need to soak gel off that's what the 100 percent acetone is for now of course you can't forget the actual builder gel you're gonna need that definitely each system is a little bit different so find the one that you like the one that works for you and then depending on the brand that you're using you may also need a base gel and you may not also need a primer so that's why it's really good to be educated do your research about the brand that you're using what it specifically requires and how to use it for example this is the izemi brand so this is their clear builder gel but you also need the base gel with it and then they also have the primer bonder situation every brand's a little bit different so you kind of need these three together for your builder gel system there are some brands builder gel where they actually have the base and the primer built in so you don't need the separate products so use whatever your system requires you're going to need your builder gel so you're going to need a couple different top coats you're going to need your glossy top coat my all-time favorite is the cocoist ultra glossy non-wipe top gel and because it's a non-wipe you can also use it for chrome so if you're planning on doing chrome then you're probably going to want a non-wipe top coat then you're also going to want a matte top coat you don't have to have the matte top coat that's kind of like a little option if you want matte but you definitely need your shiny top coat now you're going to need some lint-free wipes these are used for cleansing the nail cleansing the tacky layer for art i really like these ones from light elegance because they are a hundred percent lint free they are super nice you're not going to end up with fuzzies all over the place and they just work really well i've never had a problem with these ones so you're going to want some lint free wipes if you're just starting out and your budget is really tight you can always use some paper towels and like cut them up in little squares but eventually you're gonna want some nice wipes. I also recommend having some gloves. Now, even if you do the nails on yourself, I recommend having gloves because if you're like me, I do one hand at a time. So I will do this hand, the builder gel, the color, the top coat, and then I will do the same thing on the other hand. Now I will put the glove on the hand that I just did to protect it so I don't scratch it from the file. I don't um, accidentally get something on it, whatever it is, it's going to keep it nice and safe. So even if you're doing nails on yourself, I still recommend having gloves, but especially if you're doing nails on clients, I recommend having gloves because it's going to protect your hands. When we work with gel, a lot of times we're going to get gel on us. It just happens. Gel seeps out of bottles, out of pots. It just, things become sticky. If we have gloves, we are protecting our hands, protecting our skin from developing allergies from constantly touching these products and we're not purposely trying to get the gel on our skin but it's just going to happen so the gloves are kind of like your little safety net to kind of protect you so i always recommend having gloves now you're going to want any gel colors of your choice if you're using a builder gel that's already tinted and you like that color you don't need any other color on top then you're good to go you don't need to add any other gel polish colors but if you want to spice it up and you want a little bit of color every once in a while then you're going to need some colors or if you're seeing clients then i recommend having you know a good basic selection of gel polish colors when we are finishing we're definitely going to want some cuticle oil this is one of my favorite cuticle oils this is the luna Lux cuticle oil this is in the scent lemon bar i don't think they sell this one i think it's a limited edition so hopefully it comes back because it is seriously it seriously smells like a lemon bar i can smell the lemon i can smell the crust it's so good. 
one of my favorites and you're gonna want some lotion i've been using the luxury daddy lotion i love this one maybe one day luna lux will come out with a lotion maybe in a lemon bar scent because that would be so good now something that is optional it may not be something that you invest in right away but eventually you're probably going to want an e-file and a good quality e-file at that this is the medicool e-file love it i did just post a video all about this e-file in case you want to check that out but this is going to be an investment for sure i believe this one is about 420 dollars but if you are seeing clients regularly and eventually, you know, you have built up a clientele, you're going to want this. It's going to help you. It's going to help your wrist, save your hands. It's going to save your body. It's going to make things go a lot faster. And of course, we want to make sure we are trained in it before we use it. But it's just an option. Eventually, you might want an e-file as well as some bits. I do also have a video about showing my favorite bits if you wanna check that out. If you have an e-file, you probably want a dust collector as well. Again, this is gonna be one of those more high ticket investment items. This is the Shamox dust collector. I have been using it for a while. I absolutely love it. It is really nice. I don't remember the exact price. It might be $300, but it's so worth it if you are seeing clients all the time. Again, something to work up to if you are newer. Then of course we are gonna want our disinfectant so we can clean our tools properly and disinfect them so that way we aren't spreading any germs, diseases, any of that stuff. So that is definitely a must. You gotta have your disinfectant. Um, I will put my favorite one down in the description box because it doesn't rust tools. It's really nice. I have used one in the past where if you left it in just a little bit too long, the tool would be rusted and done for. But this one, love it. And lastly, it's not a physical item, but education. You are gonna need to be educated in the products that you're using and the techniques. And it might take a little bit of time, a little bit of like one class here, one class there. I try to take a couple classes every year personally myself. Seek out some education in your area or online classes. And speaking of that, I do actually have an online class. If you haven't seen it, you can check it out on my website. Also a little bonus, obviously if you wanna do nail art, you're gonna need some nail art brushes, some possibly some gel paints if you want to do hand painted art, chromes, your glitters, that kind of stuff. Those aren't really essentials, it's more of like up to you, kind of your style, what you like. And so I didn't mention any of that stuff, but if you wanna do nail art, obviously you gotta have some nail art stuff. But I would love to hear from you guys kind of where you're at in your journey. Are you just starting? Is that why you're seeking out this video? Have you already been doing nails? Maybe you've been doing acrylic nails, but you want to kind of venture into gel nails now. I just wanna hear where are you guys from and kind of where are you at in your journey so thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you have a wonderful day hope this video helped you out i will make sure and put everything down there in the description box with links where you can find some of my favorite items and i will see you guys in the next video